2024 September 26. Daily Bread Passage. 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 16 to 31. Key verse. Verse 25. Title. David and Bathsheba's two sons. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and spent the nights lying in sackcloth on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused, and he would not eat any food with them. On the seventh day the child died. David's attendants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they thought, while the child was still living, he wouldn't listen to us when we spoke to him. How can we now tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? he asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotions and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and at his request they served him food, and he ate. His attendants asked him, why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept, but now that the child is dead, you get up and eat. He answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went to her and made love to her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him. And because the Lord loved him, he sent word through Nathan the prophet to name him Jedidiah. Meanwhile Joab fought against Rabbah of the Ammonites and captured the royal citadel. Joab then sent messengers to David, saying, I have fought against Rabbah and taken its water supply. Now muster the rest of the troops and besiege the city and capture it. Otherwise I will take the city, and it will be named after me. So David mustered the entire army and went to Rabbah, and attacked and captured it. David took the crown from their king's head, and it was placed on his own head. It weighed a talent of gold, and it was set with precious stones. David took a great quantity of plunder from the city, and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes, and he made them work at brickmaking. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then he and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. The consequences of David's adultery were not theoretical, but visceral fasting and weeping. David suffered for seven days with his child's illness and eventual death. David's servants feared what David would do. But now that his relationship was restored to God through repentance, he was not destroyed by the devastating news. He washed, went to the Lord and worshipped, then came home and ate. He had pleaded for God's mercy, but no longer demanded his own way. He knew one day he would meet his son again in God. God did not hold a grudge against David and Bathsheba. His forgiveness was not conditional. When Solomon was born, God loved the boy so much he gave him the name Jedidiah, loved by the Lord. God also gave David a new opportunity to defeat the Ammonites, which he should have done in the first place. David took the crown of their God king, and the Ammonites were subdued. We cannot change the past, but we learn from David to repent our sins and receive God's forgiveness in the cross. Then we face the present in the grace and mercy of God, responding in worship and obedience. Our future is full of hope. Prayer Father, thank you for the refreshing power of repentance, and your forgiveness in Jesus. One word. God comforts those who repent.